darkest fears and dearest hope is I've been walking and now I'm hanging from What's your experience with knots and hitches when you hear of things like clove hitch or half hitch versus square knot or bowling? Mm -hmm. Knot tightens on the rope, hitch tightens on something else. Hitches are dependent upon mm -hmm. other things. They can't exist without mm -hmm. other things. So a mutra hitch, which is a great, um, for, let's say you, you don't have a belaying device and you got to lower somebody slowly, mm -hmm. this is a mutra hitch. It's pretty simple. Put, snap it on your carabiner and it's reversible. So if you were to hold on to that and pop, provide some tension, I'm belaying, mm -hmm. I'll let a little go, go ahead and keep pulling back, right? Now let's say you're belaying, mm. go ahead and now lo loosen up a little bit so I can slide. Watch it flip over the bar, right? Now mm. you're belaying me. Oh, oh, cool. So it's a reversible um, belay. Oh, cool. Wow. Munter hitch, right? Really cool. But without that carabiner, my finger or whatever that's holding, it can't exist. All right? Let's get knotty. So I've been using a lot of knot terminology. I want to make that clear by giving you some definitions that help to learn knots as well as to uh, impart the information to other people. When you're moving a rope around, there's going to be an end that just stays there and an end that does the work. So I refer to the, the part you manipulate as your working end. The end that just stays there is your standing end. Okay, and so let's see how that applies to that bowling. This, this rope also, in another term, has a memory. It's staying in the shape that it once was in. So I'm going to take my working end and I'm just going to create a bite. Okay, and we can make a lot with just bites. In fact, one of the more famous knots that you see in scouting and in the military, which is also a weakening knot, it really depreciates the strength of a rope, um, in some cases in upwards of 60% because of the way it pinches the rope, okay, is the square knot. And now I'm going to share with you two different knots. One is called a square knot and one is called a thieves knot. And all we're doing is we're creating two bites that interlock with each other. So I'm going to come around with my working end. I'm going to go behind both the working and standing ends of this bite. And then I'm going to pull it back in, okay? Now this knot, if I just showed you this part, looks like a square knot, behaves like a square knot. But because the working end on both ropes is in opposite positions. In other words, they're not both on the same side. One is on the uh, upward side, one is on the lower side. This knot will not stick together. It's a thieves knot. Watch what happens when I pull it apart. And I can't, I can pull it apart. See how it turns into a lark's head and twists? Right, a square knot won't do that. So let's do that again. Making a square knot will have the working end facing away from me or on the other side of the standing end with you know perspective where I'm sitting. And we're going to do the same thing with this rope so that it does the same thing. Okay, now instead of having a thieves knot that'll come undone, again, we'll cinch it together and it looks the same. This is how you check to see if you have a square knot or a thieves knot. It has this, these two bites kind of sliding along each other. There we go. There's a knot that is used to attach two ropes together similar to the square knot. The only modification is that you don't make a bite, you make a loop. And that is a sheet bend. It's also mm. a bowline. Yeah. Okay, the sheet bend and a bowline are the same knot. Well, yeah, and this is the whole rabbit and tree thing that confuses some people. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an underhand loop, meaning that the working end goes underneath. And then from there, we take Ooh. our, if, we're, if it's a different rope, it's a sheet bend. If it's the same rope, it's a bowline, okay? We come up from beneath, we go around the working end and back down into that underhand loop and pull both ends tight. Mm -hmm. Again, if this were a separate piece of rope, we'd have, if this were a separate piece of rope than this, we'd have a sheet bend, but now we have a bowline. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to um, make a proper bowline, this is the correct way where the, where the working end goes to the outside of the loop. Mm -hmm. To the inside of the loop, it'll still hold, but it'll be, it'll be a much weaker knot. Every time you make a knot in a rope, you weaken the rope. If there's a breaking point, have you ever pulled something heavy with a rope where you tied a knot? It usually breaks at the knot, and that's because it's literally uh, cutting itself in half from all that torque and tightening, okay? 
So we tie bowlines as a fixed loop at the end of a rope. There are all different kinds of knots we can use to tie at the end of a rope to make a fixed loop. But this bowline was subjected to a lot of uh, stress. It would tell by the melt and the sear of the braid on this plastic rope that this was on pretty tight. But the cool thing about a bowline, and I like this better than a figure eight on a bite, is that you can take the bend, and we call, every time a, a rope bends, it's called a bite. So that's synonymous with bend when you hear the word bite. There's a bite that goes around, okay, and this is the working end. It goes around, up through an overhand loop, around the standing end, creates a bite around the standing end, it goes back down into that overhand loop. This bite is what we use as a quick release for bowling knots. Figure eights don't have that, they cinch. So what you do is you turn your knot over, put your thumb on the bite, and then bend it forward. And it automatically loosens that knot. No matter how much strain, unless the plastic physically uh, melts into itself, um, you should be able to get that knot out. Uh, the exception would be some natural fiber ropes are pretty gnarly and have a lot to grip onto. But with uh, nylon, or the petroleum product ropes, it's an easy way to get that sticks loop out after a lot of stress and strain.